This is one for all the menals out there. Like, I don't do therapy. <laughs> don't need it. Let me, let me mount you. Bend over. It would be too coincidental. Good morning, my effervescent beauty queen of jambalaya. Um, I'm not really... What does effervescent mean? Oh. Giving off bubbles. We'll go with it. Um, it's a bit of a different start to the morning today. Like, I realized yesterday I was stuck in a bit of a rut, and I didn't really do anything to get out of it. Um, but today is, is actually kind of like a redo because yesterday wasn't so good because I was waiting on an email to come back in that would be pretty huge. And there's also meant to be another one coming in today that I'm expecting. So rather than do the same behavior as yesterday, I thought let's try something different. So for the morning, for editing the video, instead of sitting down on the couch, like in a nice comfy position, I decided to do it at a table, got it done quicker, no TikTok in the morning. Like sometimes I would go on TikTok while I'm waiting for like it to export or for something to happen. Uh, but no, decided to do none of that. And instead, got it done, went to the gym, had a strong gym session. And now I thought, let's fly the drone a little bit, finish clearing the old head and get ready for the day and make the day a really good one. Made a couple of notes and I thought, let's, let's fly the drone while we're out here this morning. Yeah, so I, I feel, in the words of the, in the words of Theo Vaughn, which you're not gonna like, this is one for all the menals out there. That was my American accent. Uh, turn this on. I have the opinion that you can control a lot of your emotions with your brain, like your brain and the way you think mentally can pass the right chemicals through your body. And I'm not saying that's a fix for everything, but for me, I feel like I can control my own mood and everything about myself mentally by the way I think. And I know that sounds stupid, but I mean it from the perspective of, um, if you think a different way, then you can release chemicals that would change the way you're thinking and just change your current makeup. Okay, this drone's tiny. So we're gonna see what kind of small gaps we can fly through. Don't expect anything amazing. Like, for example, my wife is, she's eight months pregnant and she, oh my goodness. And she's doing a home birth, like full natural home birth. And she had our last child full natural, like, oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've flown. Uh, full natural home birth, which I don't think you guys understand how mentally strong you have to be when there are drugs out there to relieve you from the pain to decide that you're gonna have, why can't I like, do this properly? When the drugs are there to take away the pain and you decide, no, I'm still gonna do it without the drugs, this isn't very bloody hell. Where are we? Yeah, so she has been essentially trying to train herself to believe that she can control everything with the way she thinks which I am fully on board with. That's the way that I think. Oh, I broke it again. Damn it. It's really annoying. This is what made, I don't know. <laughs> I did this to the last one actually of this exact same drone. And like I got it to fly again, but then I flew it through this metal bridge and it just lost complete connection. And I lost it in the water, which is annoying because the drone is like a hundred, this, drone itself is like a hundred dollars uh but the everything that films like the whole camera system on top 
that's like another 220 so it's like just throwing $300 into the water. I don't really like this small tactical flying. I'm really not very good at it, as you can tell. Like I think in our current society, uh, there's such a an idea that um, there's someone else to blame and you're like, oh, I've got to come back for the battery. That's the problem with these drones. The battery lasts so little time whatsoever. There's this um, belief that you can... Hold on. That you can blame all of your problems, your trauma on external things when really, who cares? Yeah, like these things may have happened, but they're not happening right now and you should do what you can to control where you're at. I don't know, I, I think I have a very simplistic view on this. And I understand that other people have different viewpoints on it. Which is fine. But it makes my life a lot easier knowing that I have everything I need to control my situation, you know, within reason. I also... Um, I'm also a big believer in this idea that if something doesn't make sense, it's because you don't understand it. So, let's say, for example, someone is riddled with anxiety and can't get out of bed. I don't understand what it means to be riddled with anxiety that you can't get out of bed. I've, I've just never felt that way. I would say, I was about to say for better or for worse, but I'd say probably for better. What the fuck is wrong with me? What was that? I don't even know where I am. Maybe we'll switch drones. You know what? I'm not going this journey alone. So, like, let's take, I feel like I've touched on this topic quite a few times now. Let's say um, someone feels like they're in the wrong body, right? So they're born a female and they feel like they should be a male. My opinion is such that there's a chemical imbalance. And again, like, I really don't understand the topic that well. But that there's a chemical imbalance and the belief in people that, have the body transformations is that to solve this they go with the flow like they believe that the fix is is as simple as just switching genders now i know that's a very basic way of looking at it but to me it's you feel the way you do because of a chemical imbalance so what can you do to balance out those chemicals and i don't feel i mean I, I mean, I, I do your thing. If you want to trans, that's fine. Uh, but I guess from my opinion, it's... Is that the solution? Or is that just masking the, let's say, problem or the issue? You know, I want to be kind of tasteful in the words I use there. Let's switch drones because I can't fly this one. I'm too bad. I don't know. I know in the current climate, that's a... Could be considered like quite an ignorant way to look at the situation. I'm a big fan of this drone, by the way. Look at the size of that. I think it's three inch, four inch. I don't remember, but I like it because it just fits on my bag so easily. Wow, Oliver, very nice. We're gonna fly back that way.
I love this drone so much more because the power on it makes it seem way more smooth. Watch me crash into a tree. Oh gosh. I'm not very smooth at flying this, which I think is my one of my main problems. Whoops. Like I scare myself as I'm flying. This idea I have about, you know, being able to control everything in your body, it doesn't, like, I don't have the opinion that everyone should think that way. I think you think, you know, however you want to. For me, I really like that. I guess, oh my gosh. It's the tree branches that I can't see because there's no bloody leaves on them anymore. Forgot my tripod this morning, and yes, that did scare me. Very badly. Should we try and weave in between these trees? That was close. Oh, not the smoothest flight you've ever had. Whoops, oh, a little bonk. This, the uh, motion sickness I got from like the first few times flying this, I think the first time I had to sit on my couch for about, oh my gosh, for about 30 minutes, just because I was so sick, surprisingly. Like these are fun to rip for a few minutes. Like I think I've been going, yeah, two minutes at the moment. Let's pretend I cut the video a few seconds earlier. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. Get out of there. All right. Let's head home. I, what do you think about this idea of being able to control much of your emotions just internally. It kind of got me a while back, I started thinking about how, <laughs> how do I put this? I'm 32 and therapy in my generation is starting to become okay, but before that it was like, you're kind of a wussy if you go do therapy. Now, I have my feelings on therapy in that I think therapy's really good. Like, I don't do therapy, don't need it. <laughs> but I think therapy's really good for trying to help you understand the feelings that you have, like why you have those, what's causing those, and how you can manage those feelings. Essentially, like from my understanding of therapy, it's someone asking you the right questions to help you think about things in a certain light um, and bring you to an understanding of the way you feel, the way you think, the way you do things. And honestly, I, I think I would be an advocate for therapy. I think one of the... <laughs> my, one of my strengths and my downfalls is that I overthink everything, which means I essentially do the analyzing myself. I essentially am my own therapist. Because <laughs> I, I think through my actions, I think how could I have done it differently? How could I currently do what I'm doing better? Or just differently? Um, like of a situation, how do I change the outcome of a situation? What could I have done differently to change the outcome of that situation? And like, yeah, analyzing myself of why did I make the decision I did? And was it the right decision with the information I have right now? I guess it goes into the fact that I live my life in this iterative process of I do something, um, get feedback, analyze that feedback, and 
and try again. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that's common across people or not. I, I feel like when I see people making, give me a sec, let me just mount you. Let me, let me mount you, bend over. <laughs> I think when I see someone with a bad characteristic or a bad trait, I think about how many times they have done something with that same bad behavior and bad trait. And then I think, do you ever analyze to try and be better? Like you look at that situation, think what you could have done differently or better, or even what the other person could have done. How could you change what you do to change their behavior? so that the situation goes better next time. I, it's gonna sound like I think very highly of myself, but whenever I do something and the outcome is really good or really bad, I think, how could I have, like, what did I do that made that outcome really good? And what did I do or what could I have done to change the outcome if it was really bad? And I think that kind of analysis means that the person who's asking themselves those questions is constantly improving and becoming a better person, not just for themselves, but for everyone around them. Like if I think of the things that I improve at every day, yes, I make my life more pleasurable, but I also make anyone around me's life more pleasurable. And with a child, I think about this even more, of what traits, what things am I doing that my son will pick up on that I think, you know, he shouldn't pick up on. Like, and I, I'm, I'm trying to be very cognizant of changing those or, or improving on those things so that I'm just better, I, I'm a better role model for him. We have a call with Kenny this morning, so we'll stick about an hour for that. But then, main priority, priority number one, edit the TikTok. Now, I think I'll walk you through my process of whittling down the footage to begin with, because I have so much. Um, and then I need to, I mentioned yesterday, I want to run the script through ChatGPT to improve the, um, the, the drawing in of the viewer to my flaws and how I'm changing through the video. I'm not sure how to do that, but we can try it. Doing. All right, I thought I'd show you that, like something that I find really helpful for getting into the groove of things and like setting a clean, almost like a clean slate is just to get everything cleaned up. Like it's annoying, some of this stuff is out still because I'm going to be using it. But if I can clean up, get things put away, <laughs> you see, I'm freaking dancing around from spot to spot trying to figure out what I should do next. But if I can get everything put away, it's like I have a clean work area to get my bits done, you know? I also, looking at making adjustments to the the socials automation piece. So it's either I spend, what was it like, four, six, like $70 a month, or I spend $30 a month, 30 or $40 a month. Those are my choices. And how do I change that? I was trying to figure out a workaround on this make.com instead of using Zapier because it's just Zapier just seems pretty expensive in comparison. So I was on ch good old chat GPT-4 this morning trying to think of other solutions. So I have one thing to try before 6 p.m. tonight. So as much as I want to, like I really do want to do that right now to see if it will work. But this is where I have to be a bit more careful with myself and prioritize what I'm doing. 
like where I spend my time. So that's going to be something we do later this evening. I got this comment yesterday actually. So I bought these, like the mini, the Skittles Littles. And the whole point was that I see how many of these can I fit in my mouth and then how many of these can I fit in my mouth. And I did something somewhat similar for a, uh, a chewing gum video a while back. I think I, I mentioned it on here that it did like 2.3 million views. <laughs> and I got a comment last night that was, bro, you look like you're 30. And I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the kid's right. I am at least 30. <laughs> but, and like that kind of comment hits because it's like, oh, I am second guessing myself. Should I be doing this type of content? Like, is it a bit immature? But then I think back to what my real goal is. It's not about like, looking mature or being mature. It's actually about taking a concept and making it entertaining, no matter what the concept is. And like I have to keep that in mind as I make these videos. Like some of them are going to be stupid. Like, um, I mean, yeah, I agree. That's probably one of my more stupid concepts. But I like I still kind of enjoyed it. Kind of. I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed the challenge of making it entertaining. Entertaining. And one day, let me show you back in here. It's pretty grim and it does need a new tidy. But I want to turn this area into a nice, either like a nice storage area or a gaming setup. It could be sweet to have a sofa over here under the stairs and then maybe like a screen or something here or like divide up the area somehow or maybe turn that back area um, back in here into like an actual storage area where I can come in and get the things I need. But for now it remains just a huge mess which is, which is always ideal. Now, this is something that I see is overlooked all the time is this, um, this idea of, I think it's, you would call it maybe quiet quitting, but people having a main job, like a nine to five job alongside trying to make content. Because if that's the case, more often than not, you'll find that that person is not putting in all their effort into their main job. And the outcome of that is that they stop doing the tasks that take you above and beyond to get you promoted. And so when you don't get promoted, you don't get paid more. And so your quality of life doesn't increase. You don't have more money. And you sit at this place, like for me, um, basically that same situation at my work. And I came to this realization that I spent like three years with no like pay increase or anything like that. So my, my standard of living, things got more expensive, but the money coming in stayed the same. And I don't just think about that for just me. I think about that for my wife, in this case, more my wife too, because I want to make sure I'm providing her to live an enjoyable life. And like, while she's a stay at home mom, it's my responsibility to make sure that like she can enjoy her life too and not just skimping by and looking after Ruger and the house all day. Like I want her to be able to go and do things that she would enjoy to do in life as well. And it's my responsibility to make sure there's enough income for her to do those things. Now I did play a game that 
I wouldn't touch the money I made from social media until such time as I go full time on social media. So now, like if I have a bad month, then I'll dip into that, which is, you know, the, the kind of backup. Um, but I really want to, I've spent, essentially, I spent the last three years earning the same amount of money because I've been like, splitting my effort where most people would be earning more from their main job because they would have gotten promotions and whatnot. And I haven't because I haven't been trying to. So I really, really need to uh, increase the revenue I'm generating, not just to be greedy, but to fulfill my responsibility of looking after my wife and allowing her to live the life she wants to as a stay-at-home mom as well. Deep. Okay, I think we are, I think we're done. Uh, no little bits. So that car can go upstairs, that shirt can go upstairs. Um, the Shrek Crocs can probably stay down here. The stuffed snacks. Should we give the Taco Supreme a go? Gosh. You ready? You ready for this? Taco Supreme Sunflower Seeds. It, it tastes like, oh my goodness, how? It tastes like taco seasoning. But then, I somehow get some like cheese flavor. If I didn't know better, I think I'd actually say I was eating a taco. It's crazy how they do that. What's more crazy? It's how much bloody effort goes into trying to get the seed out of a sunflower kernel. These are too salty as well, I think, actually. Like that mouthful. I wouldn't take another mouthful of those. Yeah. I just destroyed that kernel, that seed. Yeah, I think I'm done. All right, let me switch over. I'm gonna start, uh, we'll run the script that I have into ChatGPT and try and finagle it a bit more. Nice. I bet you any second, if not any second, within the next 10, 15 minutes, there's gonna be a scratch at the door for the dog to come in. She was just in here as well. All right, this morning, we are, we are prepared. We're gonna get going on this, all right? <laughs> um, excuse me, I wanna run my script, script through Jatch chat GPT and there are three things that I want to do. One is to check that it's um, pungent enough, that it's catchy enough that people can like sink their teeth into the character. And then I also want to create a GPT, which is essentially like a, a bot, an automation that I can put my script into and it would automatically change any word or any phrases that aren't at the fifth grade reading level. So 
Let's share my screen here. Um, this is my first time using this, all right? So create, uh, hi, I'll help you build a new chat GPT. You can say something like make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer. Let's say make a creative who helps um, adapt my social media script who adapts my social media script to ensure oh, to optimize it optimize it for viewer engagement the video will be 60 to 90 seconds and posted to my TikTok account where I make videos. about my experience doing something. I call these experiences side quests and, and a big focus is the storytelling aspect as the main character moves from their floor causing flower floor causing them challenges as the main character overcomes their floor overcomes their floor that causes them challenges. And a big focus in the storytelling aspect, I call these experiences side quests, and a big focus is the storytelling aspect as the main character overcomes their flaw that causes them challenges. And flips that into a strength. Right? I want the viewer to really understand the main character's flaw. how that holds them back and how they overcome it. By focusing, by learning, by learning and how they overcome Here's what I'm thinking, that the flaw is the opposite of the strength. So I wouldn't say that they are, like, are they turning that flaw into a strength that they're doing the opposite? I want the viewer to really understand the main character's flaw, how that holds them back, and how they overcome it by... finding and adopting the opposing strength. Maybe that's too detailed, we'll see. So obviously this is designed just for me and what I'm doing at the moment, which we'll call this iteration one where we, I guess you'll, you'll hear me talk about iterations a lot, 
we do a small amount of work to figure out if something helps us move in the direction we want to go. If it does work and it is good, then you do a second version of it and you keep iterating based on the feedback you get from the previous version. I would like to at some point go and explore what other GPTs or what GPTs other people have created. I should lock my phone away as well. Let's do two hours on that. This, oh, I'm so glad I bought this. I think it was like $20 maybe. But you can set your time. Surprisingly, it locks. And then, I mean, you can still access the screen and buttons, but it's pretty annoying and pretty difficult. So yeah, it's good just to put away. And now I'm not tempted to go onto TikTok or anything. I just like waste time. Like I find myself wasting a ton of time just like looking at notifications for no reason. All right, so I guess this is exporting. And I need to copy all the footage off of the drone from this morning. taking a long time. I should honestly have just used this as a normal prompt. Like I don't think now is the right time for me to be creating GPTs, but I'm interested in it, you know? Because while I'm waiting, I'll copy over some footage for today. I need to take my sucrosomial magnesium. Let's do that in a second. It's going to be edit day 11, 15, 23. Cool. This is the ZV1. Beautiful. And then the Googles. We'll just put FPV. Still exporting. Wow. I can hear Dudas footsteps at close to the door. There it is. Would you like to come in, Mrs. Duda? Come on in, madam. You wanna jump on your chair? No, up here, up here. You wanna jump on your chair? Good girl. It's a good sausage. I let me go over here for a second. Um, you know, I told you I was waiting on that email from yesterday. Well, I decided, and like genuinely, I need a, I need a shave. Okay, the neck beard is getting out of control. Just look at this. Duda, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh no, I'm sorry. Hi Duda. Hello. Get close to the camera, Duda. Oh yeah, tickle, tickle, tickle. Can't you see? Sometimes your tickles just hypnotize me. That was good, Duda, wasn't it? Good girl. Um, and I... I want a response both because I'm very impatient. Dude, we're not doing this again. Like, I'll pet you while I'm talking for this second. <laughs> I'm very impatient uh, because I believe whatever the situation, there should be an update. So, like, in this case, the guy not responding either means he's just, like, not bothered, he's ghosted, or he's conferring with his team. Either way, that should be an email. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. Here's the timeline. 
thank you. So I crafted what I think was a pretty good email that did two jobs. One, let him know that, you know what, I'll just, I'll read it to you. I think it's quite good. Okay. Hey, so-and-so, uh, I'll give you the situation. The guy emailed me, which is, my email is the same email that I'm on and my manager is on. So email comes in, they propose a rate and what they're looking for. Um, I let him know that I'm incredibly busy right now and that I'll loop in Rob to help with the negotiations. So then Rob and I devised an email that we sent back to this guy. Bearing in mind, when I responded to the guy, he then responded to me essentially with a question to Rob within like five, 10 minutes. So he could be really good with emails. And it's been two days since he last responded to my manager's email with like the proposed rate, like open for negotiation. So I thought it's, it's kind of a good idea for me to step in. So here it is. Hey, so-and-so, hope your week's going well. Quick update on my end. I was overdue a shave when I got your first email and now my neck beard is borderline offensive. Laughing, crying face. A normal man could shave today and have a decent beard ready in a few days, but mine takes a little longer to grow. Sweating face. <laughs> I don't want to insert myself into yours and Rob's negotiations, but in the spirit of goodwill, I do want to make sure I'm prepared for the campaign with facial hair. So I was wondering if I should hold off on shaving until a decision's made, or if I can go ahead and tackle this disgrace. Question mark. My wedding vows included, shall never have a neck beard till death do us part. That's funny. But I'm sure I can keep my wife happy a few more days if there's a spa day somewhere in there for her. Laughing, crying face. Um, I believe in uh, letting people know where you stand. So I've sent that email to my manager being essentially saying, if we don't hear back by a certain time today, this is what I plan on sending. Um, just for the open side of it. But I think that email performs two roles. It performs one role of the main role, in my opinion, of, look, I'm in desperate need of a shave. Can you just let me know if you guys are still like working through negotiating it or if you've just like decided not to continue so that I can shave? And, you know, as a result of dealing with that question or that thing, I would get a response of the fact that they are working through it or like they've decided they're not going to go ahead or the rate's too high or they want to negotiate or whatever it is. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what comes back. I'm, I'm hope. well, I haven't sent it yet, but I'm hopeful. And then this morning there was me saying, I won't worry about it, but I, I really do need to shave. It's getting that itchy point, which is gross. Okay, annoyingly, exporting still. I guess, I don't know if it's frozen. Ooh, you all right? Licking your bits. Oh yeah, we were meant to have a call with Kenny today, but he messaged me earlier and said that he had something else come up. Could we reschedule? Sure, dude. 100. Okay, I think I'm just gonna have to... I don't know what's going on with this. It's been... ChatGPT's had the export in progress for a good few minutes now while I've been ranting. Rob's just responded to me saying, a few grammar mistake, but otherwise it's funny. <laughs> I 
should really just use a just make a chat GPT to correct my grammar, shouldn't I? Okie dokie. Alright, let's kill chat GPT. Start it again. Try again. All right, start, stop, sorry. Okie dokie, did it, I don't know if it's saved. Let's see, oh, it did. Very nice. Um, wow, this is quite cool. You see, I sent it to my wife first. <laughs> All right, let's put the script in. How do I copy this easily? Um, format this into multiple paragraphs. That's, this is doing pretty well, actually. Like, when I see chat GPT, like, slow to make the response, I don't know, I wonder what's happening behind the scenes. Like, is it... Like, is it <laughs> making decisions? Is it just going to get different information? I, yeah, I just, I don't know. All right, let's go to my GPT. Here's the script. And I'd like to highlight the flaw of not being confident in my abilities. Let's see. Um, this is interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> I, I feel like that was a piece from a Cow the Dragon live like compilation of just stupid things. Um, all right, so it starts with, essentially the hook is showing the flaw. So today I'm taking on a challenge that honestly scares me. No. So what if we use my hook, which is, I'm going to drop a ball from a drone and see if I can catch it on my foot from 50 feet. Um, now I feel like there's a lot to fandangle here because me not feeling confident in my abilities I've tried to highlight, I've tried to highlight that by the fact that I've brought a gener like a power generator. Not that I, I guess that means I'm not comfortable with my abilities, doesn't it? Uh, 
So what if I'm going to drop a ball from a drone and see if I can catch it on my foot from 50 feet. Oh, what about this? Um, 50 foot. So in the, the setup want, my goal here is to, um, to prove that I can do it from 10 feet. That then proves that number one, I can somewhat do this. And number two, that the ball is actually dropping from the drone, right? Um, what if... But there's here's the catch. I'm not really confident in my abilities. Um, I'm going to catch this ball from this drone. I'm going to drop the ball from this drone and see if I can catch it on my foot. What is the actual verbiage that I'm using currently? I'm pretty sure I have that in here. Here we go. I'm gonna drop this ball from this drone and see if I can catch it on my foot. Yeah? Sorry? Okay, see you later. Bye, Woogie! A quick kissy missy. Hold on. I'll just. Bye, Mr. Woogies. You got your little drink and your hair all done, looking bougie. Come here, bud. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Well, come down and bring it your shoes on. So, ooh, that's all food in your straw. Gross. All right, come here with mummies. All right, I'll see you later. Oh, okay. Love you. Bye, Woogies. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, tutor. I question whether I should keep those personal bits in the vlog. Good girl, tutor. I don't think they're like over personal. They're very personal, but I don't think they're over personal. Um, okay, so I had the thought about this shot here. When I think about doing these videos, I'm, I, I want to make it seem super, I don't know, like low key, that it's just, that I'm just a guy who went to try and do something fun and filmed it all. I, that's what I'm looking for. And I, as I watch this back, I think if I was doing that, why would I, why would I take this shot? Like that, that, that doesn't, this the reason for this shot is just that I'm um, get making the hook for the video, which I think subconsciously gives the viewer this idea that I've purposefully done this to make this video versus I'm just making a video of the thing that I filmed, right? Like I, that might be me overthinking, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna catch the ball from this drone and see if I can catch it on my foot. Um, I questioned my ability questioning my ability. I started from 10 foot. Hmm. 
Honestly, I wasn't confident I could do it, so I brought the Anchor Solix C1000 to recharge the batteries. I think interesting part about the end of this script is it's something Kenny and I were talking about last week that the payoff I think there are two payoffs in a storytelling video it's one that the character succeeded they fulfilled their goal but then also that they changed throughout the experience that the experience changed them and I think how the experience changed them so like the serious note has to go before the payoff or like happen at the same time as the payoff otherwise um, a viewer who sees that the mission has been completed the goal has been completed in this day and age instinctively thinks oh great i got what i came for let me find the next thing that's going to entertain me all right i quite like i quite like adding this bit into the intro here but i did see something quite cool up here but then I thought, why not change the game? Let's focus on control, not just the catch. Um, but, um, Jinkies. I learned something important today. It's not just about catching the ball from a drone. It's about catching your doubts and transforming them into strengths. <laughs> Corny. <laughs> but then I thought, why not change the game? Let's focus on ball control. But then I thought, why not change the game? I should focus on ball control, not just catching it on my foot. With a new found confidence, I put in a new battery and tried catching and tried from 50 foot. With a new found confidence, I put in the new battery Flew the drone up to 50 foot and tried again. Litty. I, I honestly, I don't know if I got the celebration of this on audio. I like that. Okay, I think I can start filming this. Then we can get into the edit. Let's do that. Hello and welcome to Sidetrack Oliver. <laughs> I've just found a chat GPT here that is a negotiator. So I've thought I should probably do this in private for someone else's sake. But if I put in the emails in here and see what it spits out. Yeah, so let me, I'll stop the recording. And then. Could you role play? Hang on, let's change this. Could you role play a 
dollar rate negotiation with me for a social media TikTok campaign. Absolutely, I'd be happy to role play a rate negotiation. The brand. I don't know if I can disclose this amount, so the brand offered X amount. Um, I'll include the email thread now. Commune. Here's the introduc introductory email from Alex to me. Here's my response. Dude, this is going to be kind of cool if this works. Here's Alex's response. Is um, what should be done next? See. So now it's saying, wait for this person's response. So I'm going to give it more information like, um, that it's been a few days. It's been two days since Alex's response. And given the timeline, I would have expected to hear a response by now. If I were to follow up what should I do? So uh, the steps for negotiation after providing the email exchange, so no additional information, was to wait for the person's response, prepare for possible counter offers, consider flexibility on my end, um, emphasize why working with me would be a good thing. Um, be prepared for a call since my manager proposed that. If the rate is a sticking point, consider other options, be prepared to walk away. And the important thing, prepare to walk away, be prepared to walk away. So know what my bottom line is, and if they don't meet that, walk. So I prompted that it's been two days without a response, and given their fast timeline, I should have expected to hear a response. What should I do? Um, so key points for the follow-up email. Have a professional tone. Reference previous communication. Express understanding of the time, invite further discussion, mention that I'm available for a call, keep it short and focused, given that this is a follow-up. Yeah. Um, 
And then like, if you're going to follow up, keep it short and focused, which I agree with. I think that's a good point. But based on the previous things I've thought about, I think I should... Like in this case, I really am thinking about <laughs> thinking about my beard and wanting to shave, not about. OK, this is quite good. I think I might adapt a version of this to adapt my negotiation style, which is more of like we're busy. Uh, let me know if you can fit into this because this is what we have. If not, better, like maybe next time. Cool. OK, it was nice to try that. I will. Save that one for later and try it out. Yes. And now I record the script. <laughs> oh, you filthy slat. Oh, gosh, why did I do that? That was stupid. Sorry, I, that just came out as I... Anyway, between the last clip and now, uh, the dude replied from the brand deal that I was quite excited about. And I thought it's actually kind of interesting. I thought this would be good to share. So my rate on the TikTok creative marketplace was the rate that he went off of. So that was 6,000 on there. I just, number one, oh gosh, where do I start? I haven't updated that in like at least six months to a year. So that's extremely out of date. So I went to, essentially his email said, um, I got his rate from here. Um, Given the campaign time, I don't have time to go back to the brand to like renegotiate, etc. Can we agree to this? To which point I was like, I got to go and check what this TikTok creator marketplace says. So I, I, my phone was locked in the box and I've been, I spent probably, I'd say at least 45 minutes, like using these small gaps to try and get to my phone. It was annoying. I'm like, tilting it backwards, sideways. I'm touching the bottom part of the iPhone screen to make the screen you know, drop down to that small amount so I can reach the parts that I can't get in here. Anyway, uh, I looked and the rate says starting from 6,000, which means uh, even if, if he came to, to me and proposed $6,000 for one TikTok video and that's it, nothing else, then uh, that would be fair. But because he's asking for additional deliverables that are like uh, 60 days ad usage, which means they get permission to run ads, and then he wants 10 days link in bio. So I treat those independently of the rate for the TikTok. So my response was, like, that's fair, I'll honor the 6,000. Um, like, that's on me, unfortunately. However, let's discuss the other deliverables. And I'll tell you why my thinking is on this. This guy comes in saying his rate is 6,000. There is absolutely no way he is telling the brand, okay, we're going to charge this guy 6,000. He's probably telling the brand, we're going to charge him 10,000 thousand or like the brand provide a budget for however many influencers or creators and then this agency guy has is deciding hmm I've got a hundred grand here how do I split this across and also take my cut so his cut I've learned is between like 20 and 40 percent so let's say Panasonic give his agency a hundred grand they're going to take 20 to 40 off the top, which means there's only 60 to 80 grand left. And then they're trying to find creators in there to maximize the profit off of that 60 to 80,000. At least that's my understanding. So there's no way that six grand is the very bottom, which means he's probably willing to pay six grand for the video. And I imagine he's either going to have to cave on the rights, like it's the permissions and link in bio. And say, I don't want them or he's going to pay the rate that we suggest for them. So um, I get, that's good news. That is good news. It means that there's 
6k on the table and now it's just a case of whittling out the the smaller differences so i like that we're still waiting to hear back from another brand but based on our learnings from yesterday we're not going to touch that but what i do want to touch little boys no that's not the screen i wanted uh is touch on this edit <laughs> gross uh so let's start screen recording yeah Okay, croaky dokey. All right. So if I kind of explain, the mouse I'm using is the Logitech MX Master 3. Now, something I really like about it, seems like an ad, is that you have three different uh, configurations. So we can connect it to three different computers. So like when I had my old job computer here, I could just press this button and switch between working on my computer. Not that I ever would, and my work computer. What I mean is I would press this button before I started work so I could switch off of my computer onto my work computer, right? And I put my computer away. You can also customize each of the different buttons based on the apps that you have. So like for Final Cut Pro, which is my editing app, the buttons do different things than they would do in like Notion, for example. So I don't really use this when I'm deep in the edit, but for this part, I use it a lot. I attached a real football to a real football attached a real I attached a real a real football to a drone to see if I could catch it on my I attached a real Jeez, I guess I said that quite a few times. Unsure of my attached Uh see what this sounds like. I attached like. a real football to a drone to see if I could catch it on my foot. I attached a real football to a drone to see if I could catch it on my foot. Cool. I think those two are good. I prefer the first one, so. Unsure of my ability, unsure if I was actually, but unsure of actually being able to do it. See, I doubted I could do it from the beginning. Honestly, I doubted I could do it from the. Honestly, I doubt. Honestly, I kind of moved the drone up to thirty. Honestly. I kind of doubted I could do it from the beginning, so I bought the Anchor Solix C1000 to recharge the drone batteries. Nice, dude. Good thinking. I moved the drone up to first. I moved the drone. I moved the drone up to first to positivity. I moved the drone. I just couldn't catch it. I, did, I like to say it so many times in a few different ways, so I have options in here. But like, I I remember what I recorded and which one's the best, and typically. The last one I do is the best. With a small, with that small burst, of, with that small burst, of, and with that small burst of positive, and with that small burst of positivity. But with each, but with each failed attempt, my conf, two things on my. But with each failed T seven, I needed a break. Oh, did you put the two things on my mind? Were, but then I. But then I thought, why not just change two things on my mind were to keep going or just give up. Wow, I can't believe you did it, Oliver Wilson. Two things on my mind. But then I, my, foc my focus should be on ball. Con why not just change the game? But, but then I thought, why not? But then I thought, why not just change the My focus, my focus should be on ball. Con my focus should be, but, so I made it. So I made a new area. So with my magnet fish, so so with my magnet fishing rope. Wow, Oliver, you're so funny. And with the newfound football area. Yeah, so, and with the newfound folk, with the newfound confidence in my, and with the newfound confidence. And with the newfound confidence in my yeah. I'm going to drop this. Nice. So then when I really plan out a video, I would typically have all of the shots. Like so here I have the script. Here well, I have the script to widow willy. And then the next column is the, sh the shot. So I know when I come to the edit like this and I see each of these different clips, which essentially each of these clips references one of these sections and then i can easily just find the footage drop it on top 
and clip everything. But this is my next step to the process, which honestly kind of sucks. So this is what I call, what, what is called topping and tail, actually I don't know if that's the name for it. But what I like to do is cut the clip but have the audio go on a little bit. And I find that that's a pretty good way of making the clips join so there's no like dead space that doesn't really add anything to the video. I think dead space is good and it can be really good. But just like dead space in a sentence and it's only there purely because they're separate video clips. Like it's not like I'm talking and then take a break and then keep talking. It's just because they're separate clips. Yeah, like most of the time I try and cut this pretty well that it's only one or two frames that I'm removing from the end. See that. And with that small burst of positivity. I'd really like a shortcut that just cuts off a few frames from each end. So like I, I come here <laughs> and instead of having to like move my mouse to the, the cursor to the end and then come in three frames, I just press a single button like three times if I need to remove three frames. Wow, all of that would be sweet. Dude, it is bloody gorgeous outside. It feels so nice. Got the window open, the breeze coming in. Gorgeous. Okay, so it looks like we're coming up to about 54 seconds. And normally I would go for a video over 60 seconds for the creativity program, beta, which is essentially you get paid per thousand views but the video has to be over 60 seconds. And a view only counts if someone watches for five seconds or more. But uh, for a partnered post, you this is weird. It says you can't earn money from that program if it's a partnered post. But I have been earning little bits of money from them. I don't really understand it. I attached a real football to a drone to see if I could catch it on my foot. But... Uh, every time I watch this back, I'm like, hey, did you? That's so cool. Well done, you. Um, I was a bit naughty, actually. Right before I jumped into this, I found a guy on Fiverr that specializes in the make.com platform that I wanted. And I asked to see if he would be available to make my automation in Make. So I'm going to reply to him. <laughs> Silly Oliver. Hi, Sam. Thanks. Hi, Sam, comma. Thanks for getting back to me so quickly. Um, is the automation already a work in progress in make? Yes, it is a work in progress and happy to add you to it. I keep getting a 400 error when passing the drive URL to the buffer module.
Cool. All right, so these clips are done. Now it's just a case of going through the clips that I have, which I think is going to take ages. Um, you know what? How about I show you this process where I, I'll add markers for the clips that I need to go and get, and then that way in my head now I have an idea of the clips I want. And I can just skim through and pick the bits. I think I think that's right. Yeah. All right. So let me start the screen recording. Isn't it crazy how much higher my spirits are after I got this email back? Like, yes, I did things this morning to change my mindset and to try and be in this position. But then on top of that, you got that, you know, nice enough email. Feels good. But unsure of actually being able to do it, I started from 10 feet. Honestly, um, let's say showing drone release. Fly drone up to, oh wait, drop ball from 10 feet and catch. I started from 10 feet. Honestly, I kind of doubted I could do it from the beginning, so I brought the anchor Solix. Um, how do I show this? Let's say plugging in drone battery and other devices. Yes. The drone batteries. I moved the drone up to 37 feet, but between the wind moving the ball. Fly drone up. Um, phone shot of drone rising and ball moving. Wind moving the ball and my lack of experience with balls dropping, I just couldn't catch it. And with that, I think there should be like in here reaction to not catching. And with that small burst of positivity. Oh no, I get it, don't I? But with balls dropping. I also have the drone. This is the part where battery running out. And catching it. Nice. Wind moving the ball and my lack of experience with balls dropping. Multiple misses, I think we'll put. And with that small burst of positivity, I switched out the battery. Um. Switch drone battery. Positivity. I switched out the battery for the Solix to charge, hoping I wouldn't need it as I flew the drone up to 50 feet and tried again. Oh. 37 feet, charge the drone batteries. I moved the drone up to 37 feet, but between the width. Hmm, I'm thinking about where I put in the shot. Uh, the, where I... So there was another shot where I attached the camera onto the release thing so that I could release the camera and that would just drop. And I thought that looked pretty cool. Um, oh. Wind moving the ball. Uh, drone shot looking down at ball swaying nice Wind moving the i think yeah i really like the shot of the camera but i'm not sure where it fits in the ball and my lack of experience with balls dropping i just couldn't so i think i'll have multiple misses and when the ball's dropping i'll do 
camera drop from a drone. Experience with both small burst of positivity. I switched out the battery for the solids to charge, hoping I wouldn't need it as I flew the drone up to 50. Um, putting battery in. You know what? Flying up to 50 feet. Drone looking down as rising, as it rises. But with each failed attempt, my confidence was dropping. Um, missing ball. Oh, where do I put my... I just couldn't catch it. Taking jackets off. I think that's quite an important shot to show how many times I've tried. Flew the drone up to 50 feet and tried again. But with each failed attempt, my confidence was dropping. And by attempt 47, it's dropping. I wonder if I could put in my reaction to not getting it. And by attempt 47, I needed a break. Attempt 47. Let's do a miss catching and look defeated. Attempt 47, I needed a break. Um, sit down. I needed a break. Two things on my mind were to keep going. And Sitting by George Foreman. Mind were to keep going or just give up. But then I thought, why not just change the game? My, my um, eating lunchable, then looking at ground. Why not just change the game? My focus should be on ball control, not just catching the ball on my foot. So, so with my magnet fishing rope, I made a spot. So, my foot. So with my magnet fishing ball. Where was this? But then I thought. I'm not sure actually. Beyond ball control, not just catching the ball on my foot. So with my magnet fishing rope, I made a small area. A magnet fishing oh rope create small area. Fishing rope, I made a small area and set a new goal to control Do I area. And with the newfound confidence in my new goal, I put in a newly charged battery. I don't like how many times I say new there, but that might be something that people are like, oh, that's kind of funny. He says new like three times. Small area and set a new goal to control. Um, stand under drone. I don't know if I have that shot. Drone rises. In that area. And with the newfound confidence in my new goal, I put in a newly charged battery, flew the drone up to 50 feet, and tried again. Area and set a new goal to... I guess I won't be having that. I put in a new battery off charger. Newly charged background confidence in my new goal. I put in a newly charged drone rise up. Charge battery flew the stand under ball. The drone up to fifty feet and try to get. Um, what shall I do here? Camera drop from drone. And then wide shot of me catching it. I like that. Okay. And then I'll just go and sort through all my clips to put this together. Dude, this is sweet. Feeling good today. Nice. All right. Um, see you shortly. I'll see you when this is done. Okay, bye. Kiwi. It's quarter to three. 
the video is, I'd say, pretty much complete. I just need to get a couple of clips for the intro, and those are just like sorting through all the shots that I have to make sure that I have a good three shots at the intro. I found that um, from one, one of my, like the viral Niedermatt series videos on TikTok, I found that actually there's a good formula, which is you show the result, show the setup, and part of the process. And I think that shows the person that of the things that happened, it's kind of crazy. That's the result. The setup shows that you're actually doing it. And the um, the thing happening shows that you like managed to go through the video pretty well. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking it's uh, the first shot. I don't I honestly, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I don't know, dude, I'm not sure yet. But I'm gonna take a break, it's beautiful outside. I'm gonna play with the, the doggies and Rugi. So I'll be back on uh, just to add the clips at the beginning, get captions on there, get sound effects on there. Uh, whack a watermark on there and then throw it off to the client for them to hopefully just straight up approve. That would be nice. Hello, Duda. All right, see you in a bit. Um, oh, I guess, oh, you okay? Some updates. The guy I found to try and help with the socials automation on the make.com platform, he was a professional couldn't do it, couldn't figure it out. So I think it's actually a problem with the, what you'd call like the module, call it like an app. So I've sent a message to support to see what they can do. The last time I did that, they got back to me pretty quickly. So I'm hoping to get this squared away. And then it's gonna, yeah, I think that would be really good. Is there anything else in there? I don't think so. I do need to take my sucrothomial magnesium. That's right, dude, isn't it? Also, the for one of the other sponsored posts for the charger that I'm using in this video, I messaged them last night to let them know, or the other day, to let them know that the product, the sauna, wouldn't be arriving on time. And just said, like, look, here it is. Um, here's why I think it would be a good idea to keep if you're able to, like, pause you know, if you're able to keep the campaign going until that video is ready. So they're checking that over and we'll see what they say. I really hope they don't request something different in a different time frame because that would be annoying. All right, cool. See you in a bit. Chappy. Dude. Dude, I finished the edit and I like, forgot about filming, but it's done. Looks pretty good actually. So I've just sent it off to the client We'll see what they say for review. Um, the other thing, we didn't get a reply from one of the emails that I was hoping to get a reply from today, but the other deal, the one that's kind of like spiked up in the last few days, that looks like it's gonna move forward at a pretty decent point, money-wise, which is sweet. That's a big That's a big weight off, that's a, that's a nice little win. Oh, the other thing I was gonna mention, um, the little Skittles I bought. These. These ones? Can you see them? The littles? Yeah. Okay. Those I was going to make a video on of how many can I fit in my mouth versus the normal Skittles. Stupid video, uh, but it's kind of fun to make something like that entertaining. Anyway, do you remember I mentioned how hard it was for me to find my way th on my phone through this thing? Well, it turns out that at the time I was looking for the creator marketplace and I found it and I did some looking around and there are campaigns that brands like put on TikTok and then you can apply to them. One of them was these. So I put in my pitch and sent an email and whatnot. And I, I was telling Shay earlier, that it, if that campaign came through 
for this, like around the sum of money that I think is fair. I would look at that as like a sign of like you're doing the right work, you're going the right direction, you're doing the right things. Like it just, it would be too coincidental and I would just take it as that sign, whether that's stupid or not, whether I deserved it, whether I even, you know, get even close to going on the campaign is irrelevant to the fact that it was a weird feeling. All right, well, I am disconnecting for the night. See you tomorrow. Oh, my goal has always been never go to bed not knowing what I'm doing tomorrow. Like I've just finished this video. I can't plan out the next one because the brand are seeing if they can not delay their go live date for one of the partnered posts, but if they can, if they're okay with waiting until the date that the sauna arrives and then give me, you know, a day or two to make a video. So I can't go ahead and plan that out yet. It'd be a waste of time. Maybe what is the next video? Should we just go through my ideas tomorrow? Have a look at the things I've written down and see which ones look cool. Let's do that. And then if the deal comes through in the morning, if like that gets secured, then maybe I can spend the afternoon looking at chat, some GPTs and building those out. That would be cool. All right, let's go to sleep. See you soon.